I am Joanne Mountford. I work for the Blood Transfusion Service, but I also work at the University of Glasgow for the next two weeks. Um, so I want to talk today about cellular therapies and how we might use those in future and to give you some examples of what we're already doing. Taking excellent science out of the academic arena in the universities and translating it through the NHS and turning it into real clinical therapies. And one of the reasons we need to do that is as a whole, we're not just individually, but the population is aging. And that brings with it an increase in particularly degenerative diseases. So instead of dying of infections young, we're now living longer and wearing out. And essentially we need to treat those diseases in a different way. So if you think about diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, liver disease, we're very good at that in Scotland. These are all diseases that are mainly due to loss of function or loss of tissue. Um, so if we can replace the tissues in these cases, then we have a chance of not just treating the symptoms, but also trying to cure these diseases and affecting a better prognosis for the patients. So the key thing in a lot of these in insults or disease is that the amount of tissue lost or the amount of function lost is what governs whether you'll get better or not and how much better you will get. And at the moment, all we can do for the majority of these treatments is give you drugs, small molecules, in some cases protein therapies. But these do not treat the damage. All they do is limit the symptoms and potentially stop you having another attack. So they're not addressing the core part of the disease. So what we do instead is to develop cellular therapies that can reduce the effect by replacing the functional point that is the cells that have been lost. So cell therapies or regenerative medicine is the other name for this field, aim to repair, to replace, to restore, and to regenerate in situ those tissues that have been damaged and lost. Now, it's not as straightforward as you might think for academics to do this. There's an awful lot of things that you have to do in order to be able to deliver a clinical therapy. We're very fortunate in Scotland to have the Blood Transfusion Service, who have a very long history in developing and delivering cell therapies. Red blood cells were the original one. And we have these fantastic facilities that are the best in Europe now to generate these therapies and deliver them to clinic. So what we're aiming to do is to develop off-the-shelf therapies that can be used to treat all of these diseases. So potentially when you walk into A&E or you get carried into A&E, uh, instead of getting clot busters to treat a heart attack, we can give you back the muscle cells that have been lost from your heart and thereby increase your prognostic um, diagnosis. So this would be an off-the-shelf solution, um, but in order to do that, we need lots of cells, particularly for diseases like heart disease or um, diabetes. Also, we don't have enough blood. Globally, we're still challenged for blood. We have fantastic blood systems, but even this very basic resource is lacking. So we're looking for ways to replace that, getting away from donors to producing it in the lab. And one of the ways to do that is to take stem cells from your body or a different kind of stem cells, which are the pluripotent stem cells, either from embryos or genetically engineered ones, and to use those stem cells to develop the red cells in the laboratory to get the same product, but just grown by us rather than grown in the body. So this is one of the projects we've been working on now for about eight years, part funded by the SFC. We've had about 12 million pounds input into this project already. So these are pluripotent stem cells. These have the remarkable capacity of being able to make any cell in your body, but also they will keep growing so we can produce vast amounts of tissue that we need for the kind of therapeutics we're talking about. So these are the cells that we've used to make our red cells in the lab. Because they want to differentiate, they want to turn into anything, it's very difficult to stop them doing that. So we have to take them at the very beginning of their life and push them down a route to only be red cells. It's very difficult, it's a deliberately complex picture. The bottom line is after 30 days they go red, which tells us we got it right. Or not, that happens too. So we're able to grow these red cells in the lab now. Each bag of blood that you get as a donated product has two trillion red cells in. So what we're looking at doing now is scaling up to produce the kind of cell numbers that we need to industrialize and commercialize this process, looking at delivery mechanisms, business models, supply chain, and all of the associated technologies that are required to go with this product. And this is the NovoSang consortium that we put together from the universities and blood services. So these are mesenchymal cells, magic sticky cells. These are a different kind of stem cell. So these have remarkable capacities in themselves. They're found in umbilical cord. They're found in bone marrow. They're also found in fat. So available sources. And one of their key properties is their ability to make bone. But also we found recently that they are able to modulate immune responses and particularly aberrant immune responses. So if you have an autoimmune disease, it can quieten that down and potentially reset in things like multiple sclerosis, or they can be used to stop rejection 
in uh, organ transplant scenarios. So we're developing these cells as an alternative therapy, particularly within the context of islet transplant for diabetes, and also for bone repair, which is very straightforward. We take these cells, put them on a scaffold, and put them into people, and hopefully regrow bone. Obligatory gory picture. Um, so that's the simple side of these cells. The more complex side is using their immunomodulatory capacity. And if we take a pancreas and digest that pancreas, you can get the islets. Those islets produce insulin, and we use those therapeutically. And you can see pre-transplant, the glucose is chaotic. Post-transplant, it's all now calm. This patient is effectively cured, but it doesn't last. And it also needs a re-transplant occasionally, and the supplies are always an issue. So what we aim to do is to co-transplant the MSCs because what's happening is the immune system is destroying those islets. And if we can use the immunomodulatory capacity of the mesenchymal cells to hold the dogs back, we can allow the islets to persist for longer, to function better and for a longer duration. So affecting a much better treatment for this critical disease. So these are the two of the novel therapies that we're developing, which we're hoping are going to help us herald in this era of regenerative medicine and cellular therapy. We're getting there. As I said, we're taking things out of the universities, translating them through the NHS. We have products in clinical use, and we have products in clinical trials, and we have a pipeline coming through, which is only made possible by the particular environment we have here. This is the optimistic slide at the end of the talk. This is the route we're on. We're making great progress along this road, and I'd like to think that it's that glorious outcome at the end of it. However, I'm not sure it's going to be quite that straightforward, and I think instead the picture that we're going to be looking at for the rest of my career, hopefully, over the next 20 years, is a much more exciting and challenging road. Uh, but the view's a lot better, and I'd much rather drive this road to the island at the end there, which is the land of regenerative medicines for all of us when we're old enough to need them. <laughs>